Welcome to MEB. This is episode 13, Setting a Basis and Flowchart Scaling. A strange property of material balance problems is that the flow rate of at least one species or stream must be specified in order to initialize the size of the system and ultimately enable the solver to find the solution. If the problem makes no such specification, you as the solver have the freedom to assign a basis. This is an arbitrary flow rate that enables the problem to be solved. A basis can be set for any stream that you like, and the value can be anything you want. The decision of what stream to assign as the basis comes with practice, but usually assigning the basis on a stream with a known composition works pretty well. Personally, I recommend choosing 100 or 1 inconvenient units to make the math easier. There are two critical things to keep in mind with regard to setting a basis. The first is that you cannot set a basis if the size of the system is already specified. This includes the mass flow rate, the mole flow rate, or volumetric flow rate of anything. The second is that a problem is invalid if it asks you to solve for a flow rate but does not give you a basis, since all flow rates will depend on the basis. In the example at the end of last episode, no basis was provided. Pause the video now to refresh your memory about this problem. First, let's confirm and recognize that this problem is a candidate for basis setting. There are no flow rates given, and the only requested answer is a composition, not a flow rate. Recall also that I did a degree of freedom analysis for this problem already, and concluded that there is one degree of freedom. Once I set the basis, this will eliminate one of the unknowns, and the degree of freedom will become zero. Let's try it. Let's choose the first feed stream to equal 100 moles per minute. According to the process specification that the flow rates of the feed streams are equal, this means that the second feed stream is also 100 moles per minute. From an overall material balance, we have 100 plus 100 equals 200 moles per minute for the exit stream flow rate. Now we can solve the dichloromethane material balance. DCM only comes into the process through stream 2, so it is 100 moles per minute times 10% equals 200 moles per minute times the composition of DCM in stream 3. Solving yields 5%. Next, we can combine the two process specifications and the physical constraint on the exit stream to solve for the composition of the exit stream. I'll leave the details for you to work out, but leave a comment down below if you think you have an elegant way to explain how to solve for these compositions. Now that the exit composition is solved, we've satisfied what the problem asks for, so we can stop solving. However, if we wanted to, we'd be able to keep going and solve everything. You should pause the video now and rework the problem with a different basis to prove to yourself that the composition of the exit stream does not depend on the basis chosen. The fact that material balance problems can be solved by setting a basis is related to the property that flowcharts are scalable. This means that the composition of the streams depend only on the relative proportion of the streams, not the magnitude. This brings me to my second main point of the episode, which is flow diagram scaling. An example of when this would be relevant is if a small-scale proof-of-concept exists and you want to scale up the process to increase production. To scale a process, you have to start with a completely solved block flow diagram. You can then calculate the scaling factor by dividing the desired value of the flow rate by the current flow rate. Finally, multiply every other flow rate of the process by the same scaling factor. The result is the scaled process. Note that we never touch the composition variables, because they all remain the same. Let's see an example. For practice, I recommend pausing the video here and confirming that all the material balances are valid. As you can tell, the feed flow rate is 1,500 kg per hour. But how would the flow rates change if it is desired to process more of this feed? Let's say that the target feed flow rate of the feed stream is 6,200 kg per hour. The scaling factor is 6,200 divided by 1,500. This equals 4.13. Note that the scaling factor should be unitless. Multiplying every other flow rate by the scaling factor gives the corresponding results that are on the screen now. I recommend pausing the video here again to make sure that the material balances are still satisfied, although the scale has changed. Episode 13 Learning Objectives now that the episode is over, you should be able to 1. 
Describe the situations in which you have to assign a basis in order to solve a problem. 2. Account for the basis in a degree of freedom analysis. 3. Scale a flowchart up or down depending on the desired throughput of the process. That'll conclude this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.